the Wasm Cloud operator is sort of our attempt to bring the latest and greatest stuff that we've been working with with Wasm Cloud to Kubernetes. Um, we realized that a lot of our customers and a lot of people out there wanted to better run Wasm Cloud, and they happen to already be running um, Kubernetes, so it just felt like a really good move. Hi, this is Yohsap Nubhartia, and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us two guests from Cosmonic, Dan Norris, Director of Infrastructure, and Taylor Thomas, Director of Engineering. Dan, Taylor, it's great to have you both on the show. Yeah, thanks for having us here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, just quickly remind our viewers, what is Cosmonic all about? So Cosmonic, we are a platform um, aiming to be the best place to simply run complex applications. Um, the way that we do that is basically using a technology called WebAssembly on the back end. Um, we're trying to just make it easier for everyone to build their applications and deploy them seamlessly anywhere, any cloud, any provider, any infrastructure, whatever you happen to be able to um, need. Talk a bit about Wasm Cloud, what it is, and Cosmonic's relationship with that project. Wasm Cloud is a CNCF project. Um, it's effectively a framework for building out um, backend applications um, using WebAssembly specifically, it kind of bridges together um, the latest and greatest WebAssembly technology with um, another CNCF project called Nats. Um, so we, um, yeah, we basically just build all of that. And so Cosmonic is, you know, we're building um, a company kind of around that, trying to product, uh, productize it, uh, make it easier for enterprises and whatnot to adopt that technology. This is something that's always a really important important distinction. So Wasm Cloud is a uh, sandbox level CNCF project. It's on its way to incubating, and we've actually done a lot of the requirements that are necessary for even projects that have graduated. We're obviously still a little bit away from that. We've had things like a security audit and all those things, but it has been entirely donated and owned by the CNCF, meaning that there's those guarantees, which is a, a common problem we see nowadays with, with all the, the things that have gone down in the industry with things like Redis and, and the HashiCorp suite of tools. Um, people are concerned about having the rug pulled out from underneath them. So this is entirely owned uh, by the CNCF. Cosmonic is obviously a major contributor, and we uh, leverage Wasm Cloud uh, and, and help package it up, as, as Dan was saying, and use it for um, for large enterprises and things. But it really is meant to be an entirely open core that people can be have that guarantee that it's not going to be pulled away from them and they continue they can continue to build on it in the future. Now let's talk about uh, the contribution of Wasm Cloud Operator. What it is, what value does it bring to the Wasm Cloud ecosystem? The Wasm Cloud Operator is sort of our attempt to bring the latest and greatest stuff that we've been working with with Wasm Cloud to Kubernetes. Um, we realized that a lot of our customers and a lot of people out there wanted to better run Wasm Cloud, and they happen to already be running um, Kubernetes, so it just felt like a really good move. Um, and it's something, it was actually something we put together, um, like, I don't know, six, eight months ago. We kind of did a closed source to realize, just kind of for more for uh, um, beta testing purposes, right? And so we decided to donate it because it made the most sense. And so, the reason this is important, right? Like why does anybody sort of care about this is because we see a gap in terms of what Kubernetes is good for, right? Kubernetes is really great at, in, at running infrastructure. It's really great at being that abstraction, you know, being able to sort of route traffic or whatever, where I think a lot of businesses and a lot of um, people struggle with it is actually delivering applications, right? And Wasm Cloud's strength is really around the ability that to deliver applications and be able to sort of deploy them kind of on anything. So bringing the two together, using Kubernetes, what it's really good for, using Wasm Cloud for what it's good for, that's the whole reason the operator exists. I really think Dan, Dan caught it, but you, we're, we're very aware as, um, as people who are working on a new technology that no one's just gonna drop everything they have to move with, to what's new. It's not a wise business decision for anybody. And so really just the only other point there is that we know businesses have millions or billions of dollars invested into technologies like Kubernetes. So we want to slot in with everything that they that they do. Our, our motto has always been compatible with, but not dependent on. And so we're compatible with pretty much anything most people run, but Kubernetes is one of those big ones. We wanted to make sure we had really good integrations in for so that people wouldn't have to reinvent the wheel and it could slot in with what they got, like Dan was mentioning. One of the other things that's kind of cool about the operator and the way that because 
Wasm Cloud itself can really reach places where Kubernetes can't. Like you can deploy it on, you know, Raspberry Pis, edge devices, you know, smaller kind of colos, wherever you happen to be, right? Where you may not want to deploy Kubernetes. Um, one of the interesting things about the way that it's built is you can leverage Kubernetes APIs to actually do your deployments. So you can actually do, reuse um, investments in things like Argo CD, you know, to be able to deploy your um, applications using GitOps. But you can have that actually drive deployments to wherever um, Wasm Cloud is running by leveraging those APIs because it has such a tight integration. So you don't have to do anything specific for deploying those applications to Wasm Cloud. It all just kind of happens, just like you would deploy anything else in Kubernetes. And, Again, it's just because it has this really tight integration. Of course, when we talk about Wasm, you know, or when we talk Kubernetes, you know, people always say, hey, what's next? Uh, so is something really next, you know, when it comes to Kubernetes? Or Kubernetes is kind of technology like Linux kernel, you know, which is there. There are a lot of things around that. How do you see Wasm and Kubernetes? I think something here is another phrase that a lot of projects say, and we, we really try to live by is, it's better together. Um, and we've we've always had this idea of it's it's evolutionary, right? We have we we started off with bare metal things, and then we started running VMs, and then we ran containers in Kubernetes, and Wasm is the next level thing. Wasm can run just as well on bare metal or a VM or a container, and Kubernetes is like we've said before, it's great at managing infrastructure. And if you're using it for that purpose, this is just one other way you can manage your infrastructure. Um, and to run Wasm on top of, which is what the Wasm Cloud Operator does. Where I see it going is uh, Kubernetes is, in some ways, I mean, I think it's definitely one, right, in the market. Like, it's kind of, no one, you'd be hard-pressed to find anybody who's not trying to leverage Kubernetes in a cloud provider or anywhere else to be able to run their, you know, run their infrastructure, run whatever. Where I see it going in some ways is, like, um, you'd mentioned the Linux kernel. I almost think of it as like system D. It's not a thing that people really get passionate about, right? But it's something that you that's a building block that you happen to be building on top of, right? Where I see WebAssembly happening is is hopefully being that next building block that we end up using, right? To run more of of the um, Docker is a bad analogy, but more of kind of in terms of being that like um, way that we actually deliver your software. Right. So then now we can just kind of put it anywhere. Kubernetes can, you know, be the thing that's kind of doing the low level scheduling, but we can operate at a much higher level, being able to focus more on the application layer and less around like the how do I get ingress traffic? How do I manage all my compute resources? Right. We've kind of solved that. Kubernetes is really is really the way that we do it. When it comes to you know Kubernetes controllers, you know, the mark, I mean, talk about what kind of things you're seeing there. And uh, is the operator part of the trend or is it kind of an exception? We've actually come up with some, some terminology we've used for this. And there's kind of two emerging models from this. There is alongside and there's wrapped. And a lot of the models you see right now are wrapping WebAssembly. And why we call it that is when you are wrapping WebAssembly, you're essentially treating it like a container. Kubernetes is meant for containers. Now, yes, there is a theoretical future where you have new versions of some of the underlying things uh, that that are used underneath the hood, like CRI and all those those types of things, if you're familiar with those. And those, those kind of things could evolve to support more than containers, but really it's meant to be containers. And a lot of the problems we, we talked about, Dan mentioned earlier about this idea of being able to run things on the edge and being able to run in, in different locations. Kubernetes only really can run inside of one region, one cloud region, one data center, whatever it might be. It's not very good at spreading out to all these different these different architectures. And so when you have a um, WebAssembly component that you're treating basically as if it were a Docker container because you have to make it look like a container inside of Kubernetes, you're inheriting all those same restrictions of running Kubernetes. And so um, when you're there, there are advantages there. A lot of times, WebAssembly is smaller and faster than than an equivalent container, but you're inheriting all the other problems that Kubernetes brings. And Kubernetes, like Dan mentioned, is an infrastructure tool. It isn't an application tool. 
And so with WebAssembly components, you get application level things. And that's where the alongside model comes in. And that's what we do with the operator. Like uh, Dan said, this is something that sits in and, and integrates in with the Kubernetes APIs. You're still able to use like kube control apply. You're able to use all those same kind of, those same kind of tool sets. And you're still able to leverage things like ingress and all, and all those tools that are available to you. But it allows you to bridge into other things. Um, you're not restricting yourself to the Kubernetes cluster. You're actually even able to, we always jokingly say that we, we unintentionally solved Kubernetes federation, uh, with, with the operator because Wasm Cloud can operate as a flat network topology. We call it a compute mesh sometimes. It isn't a service mesh. It's a compute mesh. You're able to link and compute from all over the globe and into a single logical cluster for all intents and purposes, which means you can bridge multiple Kubernetes clusters or multiple edge regions. And there's, there's people who are in the Wasm Cloud community who have spoken about this vocally about how they use Kubernetes, but they couldn't do the stuff they're trying to do with plain Kubernetes. They do it by integrating alongside it rather than trying to wrap it and make it look like it's just a faster, smaller container. Earlier, you talked about you know, uh, Redis and HashiCorp. Talk a bit about the importance of open source for Cosmonic. And since you did mention those two cases, uh, how do you see those trends as their anomalies or you're like, hey, this keeps happening in the open source world, but we also continue to do the course correction that we saw with open tofu or with Velky or, you know, I've been recognition that might change things for HashiCorp. So the important part is, right, certainly when it comes to technology like Wasm Cloud is that fundamentally it is a CNCF project, right? Which means it's open governance. It's part of a foundation, just like Valky, just like open tofu has now become a lot of the other pieces of software we, that we rely on day to day, right? That were originally single vendor. We're seeing a lot of those forks now come out who are specifically being donated to foundations, right? So the way that we look at it with the stuff that we work on, right, is, you know, we're definitely open core, open source first, right? We try and bring everything back into the Wasm Cloud side. Obviously we work for a company and at some point we, you know, we have to make money. There's a profit uh, motive there as with everyone does, right? But I think the way that we look at it is all of that stuff should be value add that, you know, we bring to the table that no one else can, but everyone should be able to run this stuff and take it, you know, wherever they want to, right? All the APIs should be open. Um, the, the brilliant part, I think that it's a little underexplored, but uh, WebAssembly as a technology, right, gives us these such great abstractions and pluggability. So the way that we've done that is like all of our APIs are effectively pluggable, right? You implement a component, you consume an API that's defined via WIT, which is the interface descriptions, right? Which means that you or anyone else could take this stuff off the shelf, implement that API, and then you're most of the way, you know, to where you need to be for your own corporate needs or whatever. Um, and so like, that's the way that we approach kind of our product development is like, you should want to come to us because we are either the best at running it or there are features that like, you know, we can do um, that just is a no brainer for you to pay us for, right? But the point of open source is that you should be able to take all this, you know, run it, and you're, you're really betting on the longevity of that technology. So it should be open. We really do care about this. Anything that is, that is open, we've been trying to follow and we've been trying to show that with our actions. We like the, the frank answer is what Dan gave, like everyone has to make money at some point when they're running a business, but the, those value adds are the most important. And what we're trying to avoid is what has been called the, the FOPEN source, right? Like it's, it's fake open source. And it's not that like the, the project isn't open. It's that they, they end up being owned by those single companies. And, um, as, as our project continues to grow, we keep seeing more and more contributors from, from other people and they all have a voice and a stake in what we do. And we, we show this through our weekly community meetings, through making sure we discuss things and, and issues on GitHub and on all this, the things you should be following in an open source project, but also by committing to these, to being a part of a foundation, having this governance. And so that's very important to us because uh, that's how WebAssembly grows is we have to have these open standards, not things owned uh, or locking you into a single, single company's vision of the future. And everything we do is focused around saying, we're confident enough in the technology, both as a project and then also what we're going to offer is Cosmonic, that you'll want to use that technology, but we don't want to force you to use that. And the combination of WebAssembly plus being an open source project that's part of a foundation 
really shows our commitment to that. And so that's what we hope people see as they as they use these things is we don't want to have something happen like what's happening with the projects we've mentioned before. We want to make sure this stays open and available for people and for the community to grow. But more thing before we wrap this up is that uh, just give us a teaser, a glimpse into what else to ex expect from Cosmonic this year or from the Wasm Cloud community. Yeah, so I think a lot of our focus in the coming months um, and over the, the course of the year is really bringing a lot more features to Wasm Cloud, right? We, there's a lot of, um, there's things like multi-tenancy we're looking to kind of add in as a first class feature. Um, there's a bunch of interesting frameworks I think we're looking to put together specifically in the open source side. Um, on the Cosmonic side, um, definitely keep an eye out later this year. We're going to be investing pretty heavily in our enterprise tool set, um, kind of coming up with like a little bit of a enterprise uh, platform effectively um, to be able to deploy a lot of this stuff on. So definitely keep an eye out. Um, we should have announcements later this year. The other thing I'm, I'm hoping we can get to relatively soon, it's kind of subject to the, the processes of the CNCF, is that we'll be able to get to incubating soon, which will give people that confidence that um, the project is continuing to grow. And um, we're, we actually, it's just, there's a bunch of the maintainers who actually just finished a, a hackathon and we're going to be releasing a bunch of those kind of new features. And some of them are experimental. Some of them are fully baked features um, that are, really making this process a lot more smooth. And uh, we're going to see, probably, like, it's really been about the foundation building for 1.0 that we just released. Um, and then now that we have that solid foundation, that is the culmination of almost five years of work since the, the project's initial fan, like creation, the initial kernel of the idea. And that now has this solid foundation that we can start building and adding all these features that community members have been invested in in having or building or whatever it might be for their use cases. And so we're really looking forward to seeing a lot of those come out of the woodwork like Dan had mentioned. Dan Taylor, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Wasm Cloud Cosmonic, the Wasm Cloud operator. Thanks for great insights there. And I will look forward to chat with you guys again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, great. Thank you for having us.